Hi, and welcome to part two of three on this series, System Maintenance for Multi-Stage Pure Water Window Cleaning Systems. In the previous episode, we talked about the pre-filter and the post-filter. And just to recap, the pre-filter is usually a combined carbon and sediment filter, such as you see on this system here, as well as the Zero Revolution Max. Or some systems may even actually have a separate uh, sediment filter and a separate carbon filter. And the role of the pre-filter for the sediment is to uh, block any physical particles, any foreign particles that might be floating around in a hose line or, or in the plumbing, the customer's plumbing line, and uh, that captures that within that filter, as well as blocking chlorine. Chlorine can actually damage a reverse osmosis membrane, pre, uh, take the lifespan down a considerable amount. So you want to change that pre-filter quite often. On the post filter, we talked about how when your TDS reading out of the system reaches about 10 or above, you definitely want to change the DI. Interestingly enough, out of all the three filters on a multi-stage system, the DI is the only filter that can take the water to zero parts per million. It's the 100% uh, pure waterfication type of filter. So you may be asking yourself, well, why do we have a reverse osmosis membrane, which as you see here in this 40-inch uh, silver canister, and on this particular system we have two of them. Well, the RO is actually the main workhorse on a multi-stage system, but it can't purify the water 100%. And unlike uh, the DI, which you're, you've got a bunch of resin beads, so you've, you've got this media inside there that you can dump out and change, the RO membrane is a little bit like this uh, paper towel roll here probably wondering why I've been standing around holding a paper towel roll. So an RO membrane is actually a very long sheet or long sheets that have been rolled up really tight, turned vertically, and when the water comes in, it can either come in from the bottom or the top depending on how the system is built. But it pushes through all these rolls and wrapped membrane. And as it does so, it collects the minerals, and on one side, in between one membrane, the wastewater, or that is the water that's got all the accumulated minerals, will go out through the waste side. So you may have noticed on your system that there's always wastewater coming out. On the other side of the membrane is where you're going to get pure water. So on the input, it's always pushing through this part here, not through the center, but when it comes out, it's from the outer side that the waste is, and then from the center is where the pure water comes out. And as you can imagine, it's a lot harder to push water through this part of the membrane as opposed to the center, which is why we always say that our own membranes are quite pressure sensitive. You need a lot of good pressure going in there. So that's my most uh, dumbed down way of explaining how an RO membrane works. But now we're going to talk about RO maintenance and deciding when it's time to change the RO. Because you see, if you uh, take a look in your uh, owner's manual for your system, you've probably seen a little bit of talk about you know, when to change out the pre-filter and also when to change out your DI. But I think you'd be pretty hard-pressed to find anywhere in your manual when it tells you when it's time to change the RO. But before we get into when it's time to change the RO, let's talk about the maintenance of it. Now normally on a system, like I said earlier, you'll always have water going out the waste side. On a system here, like the uh, Zero Pure Revolution and Revolution Max, they call it the Max because they have two RO membranes, these systems are actually auto-balanced, which means it has a regulator that always shoots a certain amount of water out through the wayside so that there's always, uh, the, the, the accumulated minerals are always going out to you know, considerable debris. You don't have to worry about doing anything called flushing. Now, you may have heard flushing on systems, and that's where you you know, when we're talking about the Eco Card or the Tucker systems, they all usually have some kind of valve here. And what the valve does is that when you have it in one position, it minimizes the amount of water going to waste so it can push more towards the pure side. That helps give you a lot more pressure. But when it comes time at the end of the day, after you've been, you know, maybe working six, eight hours, you've got a lot of accumulated minerals still left on the RO membrane, which is why you'd want to turn the valve to the full waste position. So what that's going to be doing is cutting off the water to the DI, but pushing it all onto the waste side of the RO membrane. That helps to push out, flush out uh, a lot of the accumulated minerals. 
Now, it can't do that 100%. It does a pretty good job of it. And that's why eventually over time, an RO membrane will start to go. It doesn't go just like that. And in actual fact, I mean, DI sometimes, if you're using a DI only system, it's not uncommon to be like at five parts per million in the morning and be at 40, 50 in the afternoon. That's if you're using DI only. But when you have an RO like such as this, the lifespan can be a year, two years, three years, four years. In fact, typically, I usually tell customers who, especially if they're coming in person here to the store to buy the system, it'll probably last them two years minimum because the uh, hardness of the water in this area isn't terrible. It's about 150 parts per million. So it easily get two years out of an RO membrane, sometimes even more. Now you travel an hour or two west, and the TDS coming into the systems are usually like four, five, six hundred. Unfortunately for those people, an RO might only last one year. But we're going to tell, uh, talk to you now about a formula on how to tell when it's time to change the RO. Basically, it comes down to math. Okay, so what am I talking about when I say math is going to decide when to change out the RO? Well, we talked previously about the RO membrane reducing the water's TDS by 95%. And let's you know, use a test case scenario. If you had 200 parts per million coming into the system, the RO is going to reduce it down to 10 when it's brand new. So the DI only has to deal with 10 parts per million collection of minerals. So the DI will last pretty long, even though it's in a small canister. Now, gradually over time, it'll reduce from 95% reduction to 90%, 85%, 80 etc. And what you'll notice is that over time, you're going to have to replace the DI a bit more often. Now, sometimes users will experience uh, that when it's brand new, the DI seems to have lasted forever. And the first time they change, they notice it lasts hardly as long. There's a couple of reasons for that. One is if it's... Uh, Let's say they've used it for three months and they finally have to change the DI. It's the first time uh, changing of the DI. They might not realize that you have to make sure that DI is, is packed in quite well. If you don't, because I, I mean, at the factory, they make sure it's nice and packed. But if you don't, what happens is when water goes into the, the vessel, the DI, you know, being wet now, will settle. So you might get, a, you know, an inch or two gap, which isn't a big deal when the system is standing vertical. But we quite often recommend that these systems, uh, you run them horizontally on the ground. That way, less chance of them, you know, getting pulled over, knocked over, tipped over, whatever. So you can imagine if there's a bit of a void here, it doesn't matter, you know, when it's vertical because, you know, we're talking about gravity here. But when we turn the system on its side, that void will be going across the top of the full length of the DI cartridge. So what happens is water is coming in out of the RO into the DI. Some of the water is going through the DI. The rest of the water is going across from the top. So that can give you, and, you know, it's not even touching the DI. So you're getting cross-contamination, and you're going to get a higher reading than if the system was vertical. So make sure you pack that DI cartridge tight. Other than that, if over time, let's say a year, two years, you start to notice you're changing at the DI a lot more often, that's giving you basically the signs that the RO is starting to go. ROs never go like that. It won't be one day it's working great, the next day not. Uh, especially when it comes to TDS, it's very, very gradual. And so I've, you know, I've worked out a formula that I think is pretty simple for you to tell whether or not it's, you know, what your RO is working at so you can get an idea of its health. But at the same time, you have to remember that whether or not you're going to spend money on a new RO membrane is going to be determined by whether or not it costs more to buy an RO membrane or more to buy more resin over the course of the season. Let's say you have to buy two, three hundred dollars worth of resin over the season. That plus the inconvenience of having to change it out versus four or five hundred for a new RO membrane. It's kind of like, well, what makes more sense to you in your pocketbook as well as, you know, your time uh, for maintenance. But here's the basic formula of how to tell at any point of the lifespan what condition or what the health is of your RO membrane when it comes to reducing the TDS. So we're going to use a case, test case scenario 
of the Toronto area water and the system being brand new. So in the Toronto area, we usually have on average about 150 parts per million coming into the system. Coming, so in other words, coming out of the customer's tap. Now, you'll notice uh, on any system that has a DI canister that there's a hose that's going into the input of the DI. So here it is here. I've already pulled it out. Here it is on the Zero Max system. I've pulled this out for a particular reason. This hose is actually what's coming out of the RO membrane on this system. So we can tell by measuring the TDS of this particular water what is, you know, how much this is reducing the TDS from what's coming into the system. Okay? You can do the same thing there. You just pull it out. It's just a push fitting. Just pull back the blue collar, pull the hose out. So we'll just leave this out here like that. So again, our test scenario, if in Toronto we have 150 parts per million coming in, that's what we're measuring from the customer's tap, and we measure what's coming out of that hose, and this system is brand new, it should be around 6 parts per million. And that's a 95% reduction from 150. And here's how we tell that it's a 95% reduction. We take our 150 incoming source water, we measure the water out of the RO, which was 6, we subtract that, gives us 144. We now take that 144 and we divide it by the incoming TDS level, it gives us 0.96. Okay, I said 95%, in this particular case it's 96. We times that by 100, gives us 96%. So again, 150 coming in, 6 coming out, 150 minus 6 equals 144. 144 divided by the incoming gives you 0.96 times 100 equals 96%. So this is a brand new RO membrane and is performing as such. So in this particular case, you know we've got long life ahead of us, but your situation might be different. You may have much higher TDS going in, or you may have uh, had your system for a couple of years and you suspect that you may need to change out the RO. So we're going to do another scenario. In this scenario, in this particular person's uh, locale, they have 230 coming out of the tap on average. So if they take the measurement of the tap and it reads 230, and there's 46 coming out of that hose that's going into the input of the DI, it's 46. So we take 230 minus one, uh, sorry, minus 46, that gives us 184. 184 divided by the incoming TDS equals 0.8 times it by 100 equals 80%. So at 80%, this person is probably finding that they're changing at the DI maybe every two to three weeks. And for them, it could be you know way too often, either you know the cost of uh, the DI or just the inconvenience of you know, always having to take the DI and refilling it every two to three weeks. For some, that is the point. And 80% is usually that cutoff point. I'd say 80 or higher, like 80 to 85, you're, you're in or around that stage that you should be changing at your RO membrane. That's when that balance comes between the cost of resin versus the cost of a new RO membrane. So, it's, you know, it's that teetering, it's right on the fence. Anything but 80 let down, definitely change out the RO, especially if it's a system that you're using on a daily basis. Okay, so the last point I want to make about RO membranes is I use the uh, value of 95% when I talk about the reduction that the RO membrane will, will do. And I use 95% as a average. Like you saw in our test case scenario, in one of them, it was 96%. In actual fact, if you take a look at the specs on an RO membrane, you go online and you take a look at the manufacturer specs. Most often, quite a the, uh, number of the ROs that we use in our industry says up to 99% rejection. Rejection or reduction, pretty much the same thing. The reason why you might see something like that, as well as the water output that the, you know, the rating, they might say it's 2,500 gallons per day. The reason why you're seeing such high numbers in that particular case it's because every time an RO is tested in the industry, and I'm not, I'm not talking about the window cleaning industry, I'm talking about pure water uh, filter industry. All RO membranes are subjected to the same type of test in order to be able to give it a rating. 
And that test is water coming in at the temperature of 77 Fahrenheit, degrees Fahrenheit, as well as the water pressure being at 100 PSI. Now, most of the time in a case scenario where homes and cities and towns across North America, you're usually looking at about 50 to 60 PSI coming out of the tap, not 100. The more pressure you have going into the RO, the better it performs, both in how much water you get out of the system as well as how, how much of a rejection you get with the RO membrane, as well as water temperature. A lot of people don't realize this, but you know, at the end of the spring, especially if you live in the northern US or Canada, at the end of the spring, the ground's still probably frozen. So that water that's going through uh, our towns and cities is really, really cold. And colder water actually has uh, thicker molecules. It's thicker water, basically. And so it doesn't pass through the RO membrane quite as well. So at the beginning of the season, you might find that you don't get the same kind of pressure as you might get in June or July. So anyway, like I said, 95% is just an average. You might be getting better. You might be getting 96%. 96% is what I get here in my store, uh, in the building where I'm at, because we got 70 PSI coming out of the tap. So that's really quite, well, quite good. But on average, you'll, you'll see about more like 95%. Anyway, I'm hoping that uh, this information, you know, there's a lot of information here, a bit of math here. Hope it hasn't overwhelmed you. I'm going to post that mathematical formula at the very end of this video. And maybe you take a screenshot of that, print it off, or keep it on your phone or whatever. Just in case you might need it, somewhere down the line, you might want to decide, is it time to change my RO membrane? Hopefully this video will help you make that decision. All right, thanks for watching.